we receive sense impressions through the body. Without thought, they appear completely unrelated. We create thoughts through the spirit. Without sensory appearance, they consist entirely of relations. When perception and thought match, we recognize reality. The perceptions are meaningfully related. The thoughts appear to the senses. Thus we reunite by the cognitive act what our own constitution severed, the phenomenal surface and the essential being. That means our body filters out the spiritual essence of the world. Our spirit must overcome the resistance of the body. To connect with the spiritual in the world. That happens when we recognize and it also happens when we develop abilities and when we do connect our spirit with the spirit of the world they match. The spiritual in man proves akin to the spiritual in the world, both in our ability to understand and in our ability to act. This points to a time before we separated inwardly from the spirit of the world. something still in us from before the separation will show us the way back, a treasure from before the expulsion from paradise, the golden ball hidden in the well as the fairy tale imagines it. This treasure is thinking Thinking transcends the dichotomy of subject and object. Indeed, both these categories are the creation of thinking. The I as subject is the active organ of thinking, but what it creates is not subjective. Thinking is underrated. Perceptions without thinking offer but a disconnected, dismembered corpse, a multitudinous array of sensory data. Oliver Sacks tells of a man born blind who received eyesight as an adult by a successful operation. He could not understand what he saw, although his eyes were functioning in a healthy physical way. And ultimately, he stopped using them in order to rescue his sanity. That is, the body does not provide thought. Thought is spiritual, body free. But don't we need the brain to think? Firstly, if you cannot think without your brain, 
that doesn't mean it can't be done. Secondly, even if no one could think without a brain, that wouldn't mean the brain produces thought. On the contrary, our body provides us with the mere surface of things, devoid of essence. That means we think not with the body, but against it. Besides, it does not make any sense to say that thoughts come from what is not thought, because that would mean that thinking only seems to be thinking, but is really an electrochemical process. And yet, we would be arriving at this assertion by thinking. Thinking itself would be declaring itself not to be thinking. It is a peculiarity of the modern body to filter out the spiritual dimension of existence. This was not always so, as Leibniz's objection to Aristotle shows. It is a prerequisite of freeness. The act of recognizing restores full reality. The materialist considers thought unreal, and yet specimens fade, the species abides. Hence, the naive realist is driven to conceive something similar to perceptibles, which in this case he calls genes. He conceives the contradiction, non-perceptible percepts. That includes many a would-be anthroposophist. Our increasingly subjective slant, or as it is called in anthroposophy, the Luciferic influence, has made our feeling and willing personal. Thinking remained under the guidance of the spiritual world. Therefore, it is dangerous to base community on feeling or willing. It is wholesome to shed the unconscious egotism with which we cling to our personal opinions. A new kind of group soul arises when truths are seen by two or more people together. The discovery that thinking is my own spiritual activity comes through perceiving it. In this experience, man finds himself as perceiving subject already within a spiritual world. He discovers that thinking is related to a spiritual, perceptual world, as the senses are related to the physical, perceptual world. It is only natural to expect that other elements of the spiritual, perceptual world could be perceived too.
perhaps considerations like these seem to have no practical significance for actual current problems. On the contrary, the source of these problems is a particular manner of thinking and consciousness, and their solution lies in a different kind of thinking. The new way of thinking will lead to new practical results. More importantly, we shall be cultivating a new style of thinking and investigating and thereby developing a new kind 